Hi everyone, uh, time for another update on my Homebrew Z80 project. Um, I haven't uploaded the video for quite a while because I've been very busy moving from the US to New Zealand. But uh, I did get a bit of work done on the on the computer since my last one before I left, and I'm going to show you that today. So the first thing you notice is that um, you know the computer is now in in some semblance of uh, an enclosure. I've got two sheets of a uh, sort of semi-transparent black uh, acrylic on the top and bottom, and the circuit board is mounted between these on uh, hex spaces. So these boards are actually um, laser cut for me by a, uh, a company called Pinoco. Um, they do 3D printing and laser cutting on demand, so you can upload a uh, an SVG file of, of your design and they will sort of uh, cut or etch uh, acrylic or you know wood or steel or some other things to, to your specifications. So all these these holes in the corner where um, the sheet screws down to the spaces were um, laser cut, not drilled, and I've got the uh, very imaginative name LM512 kind of uh, laser etched in here in a nice sort of retro-futuristic font. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Pinoco were uh, very easy to use, reasonably priced, uh, very cool. So looking at the board itself, um, I think this is actually upside down to how I've had it oriented in most of my other videos, but just to kind of uh, refresh people's memory, I think the last time I made a video, uh, I just put in the um, the dual uh, UART or serial chip, which is this one down here, right under the the CPU. Um, so since then, what I've added is uh, these two smaller chips here, surrounded by uh, capacitors, are. Um, uh, they convert the TTL uh, level serial signals coming out of the UART, which kind of flip between zero and positive five volts. Uh, convert those into the um, RS232, uh, the you know proper uh, serial communication standard voltages, which flip between um, your negative and positive 12 or 15 volts or something. Uh, and these two little um, connectors on the end here, uh, which I'll, I'll use later. Let me hook that up to a proper sort of uh, DB9 serial serial port. The other new thing is this larger chip over in the corner here. This is a um, a real-time clock chip, uh, and next to it here you can see I've got a little uh, three volt uh, coin cell battery, like you'd find in a, a calculator or whatever, um, and that actually keeps the the oscillator for the the clock in this chip running even when there's uh, no power connected to the computer uh, as a whole. So, um, and I'll give you a quick little little demo of this. Um, so first I will stick in the, the IDE to CF card adapter so it can uh, load some, some code and do something. Uh, so on the, the first one of these connectors back here, um, I've got, so this, this is the, um, you know, this, this connects into the board here on this end is a, a sort of a male uh, DB9 serial port, same kind of thing that you would have plugged uh, your mouse into in the back of your PC in the in the 90s. Uh, this is a um, uh, a null modem adapter, uh, so this just swaps the um, you know this this is a, a USB to, to serial adapter. This has got USB on the other end, uh, so that's also a, a male uh, DB9 connector. And the null adapter just uh, switches around the, the receive and transmit connections at these ends so that there's a, a straight uh, channel between between these two. So I'll plug this one in down here and plug the USB end into my laptop and uh, start a screen running. Now, uh, also new since last time is I've got a little... Um, you know, DC power connector up here. Um, now I was originally planning to have a, um, you know, a 5 volt linear regulator or something on this board so I could plug in sort of any power supply that I that I had handy, but um, I actually ended up deciding to just uh, build it to expect straight 5 volts coming in here, and I've got a, a cable which has the um, uh, more than 2.1, 2.5mm, whatever, uh, the standard kind of DC jack on this end and a, a USB connection on the other end. Um, I figure that, you know, this thing's always going to be within range of a, a machine with USB, so I can use the, the serial inputs, so I may as well also use that, that available USB bus for, for power. 
So I'm going to plug that in to the USB port on my computer, the absurdly bright lights on my little uh, CF card adapter have, have lit up, and if I move the camera so you can see my computer, uh, you can see that the computer has sped out the time, uh, 38 minutes past 4am, obviously that's not the actual time. But uh, each time I press the reset button on the computer and run the code again, you'll see a new time coming up. So now it's uh, you know 44 seconds past 4:38 instead of 13, and I can just keep resetting and kind of go through like that. And even if I um you know I cut the the power to the machine, which I've just done now, even though you can't see it. Uh, the machine is is dead. You know the the process is not running. The the RAM is um is empty now because it only lasts for a very small amount of time without power. Um, but if I plug the power back in, you can see it's given spat out uh, 17 past 4 theta line. So it's kept the the same sense of you know the same time because of that that coin cell battery, um, which is enough to keep the the clock running by itself for for quite a few years. Um, you know, so at this point, it kind of looks like I've built the world's most impractical digital clock, um, which is true. But the uh, you know the real motivation for getting this this real time clock chip on there, um, I mean, obviously, it's handy to to have a sense of time in the in the machine, so you can timestamp uh, you know file system access that kind of thing. But the other thing this chip does is also um, you can configure it to generate. Uh, periodic interrupt signals at a, at a fixed rate, like, you know, 10, uh, 10 or 100 times a second or whatever. And that's um, that's what I'm really uh, looking to use with this chip. I can hook that up to the uh, the Z80's interrupt system and get a, a regularly occurring um, interrupt, uh, which, you know, you can, with the, the right software, but you can get a, a, a kernel kernel code to handle that, that interrupt. and um, you know, this is how you do things like preemptive multitasking. So you can have multiple, multiple programs, uh, you know, appear to be running at the same time, but uh, you know, every you know, hundred times a second, say, that interrupt goes off, and the the kernel can kind of shuffle memory around and start executing a different program and kind of interleave between them and get get uh, the illusion of, of running multiple programs at the same time. And you know, this has been uh, this is how all sort of computers since the, uh, well, even before the IBM PC really took off, like, sort of, you know, so, you know, uh, things like Commodore 64, uh, Sinclair ZX machines didn't have anything like that. You ran one program at a time. You know, from the uh, Commodore Amiga onwards and the PC, they've all had this kind of regular system interrupt, which, you know, lets you do multitasking and, uh, and all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, not only that, uh, I haven't hooked that up yet because I want to design a, a proper... Uh, interrupt system with multiple interrupts at different priorities so that I can not just have the the real-time clock generating regular interrupts for the CPU but I can hook, um, hook other things into it so uh, a lot of the the parts on the computer are capable of generating interrupts the um, the, the CF IDE card adapter can actually generate uh, interrupts when it's finished reading uh, data from the CF card into one of its little internal buffers and the the UART can generate interrupts as well. So at the moment, you know, whenever I run one of these demo programs, I tell you, uh, when the Z80 wants to print, you know, um, ten characters or whatever many characters in one of those those timestamps to the after the serial port, you know, it'll say serial port, you know, send the number zero, and then it will say, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? And it kind of sits in this tight loop, badgering the serial uh, chip until it's done. It says, okay, now send four and so on. It just kind of sits there and, and pulls the chip constantly as fast as it can until uh, until the task is finished and the chip is ready to do something else. Um, same with reading from the CF card. It just kind of says, hey, load the sectors into memory off the disk. Um, done yet, done yet, done yet. You know, it's very wasteful. The CPU can't do anything while it's waiting for the peripherals to, to complete. Um, I mean, in this case, chances actually are that this, this is... Uh, so slow compared to say the the C, uh, CF card that it doesn't actually have to batter it more than once if at all. But um, you know it's it's a very wasteful design in principle. With a proper interrupt system, I can get it to say send this uh, character. Let me know when you're done. 
in the meantime, I'm going to do whatever, and then this will raise and then drop, and the CPU can jump back to handling the, the serial channels, and sort of everything can be interleaved and, and run much more efficiently. So, um, yeah, next step is to get that circuit working on the, the breadboard, and then transfer it onto here. Um, and then at that point, uh, you know, we'll be ready for, for multitasking, which will be pretty cool. Uh, okay, thanks for watching. Bye.